If you've worked with SwiftUI on iOS 16 and before, you know the binding property wrapper that you can use to take some state that's owned elsewhere and obtain read access, where you can read whatever the state is on the data source as it is elsewhere. And you can also mutate that data source. So you can say, I want this property to now become something else. Um, that's what binding does. But what does bindable do, right? That's new. Uh, a lot of people are confused about what bindable is supposed to do, which problem it's supposed to solve. And I've even seen some people think that bindable might replace binding altogether. Now, in this video, I just want to, to start by exploring bindable uh, binding and figure out the differences between them to see um, what we can do with bindable and which problems it solves. So let's go ahead and start with an example of where we would need a binding normally. So we're kind of going to go pre iOS 17 and we're going to build a little text input field uh, that we could use for search query or something like that. And then we're going to introduce bindable at some point to see uh, what it's for. All right, so I'll start off by creating a state property here. I'm going to call that a query and it's going to be a string, right? I'm just going to use an empty string as a default and I'll put a text field on the screen. Uh, I'm going to make the title for that search query and we'll bind that to our query. Now, I don't like the default look of text fields. So I'm going to go on ahead and give it a style of round border and I'm going to give it some padding, right? Just, just so it looks ever so slightly nicer because um, that's just more pleasant to work with. And so as the preview kind of fires up, uh, we can see that I have this search query here and I can type and that updates our state var. Now to visualize that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my text field into a VStack um, and I will put text down here and just show the query, right? That will simply mirror what I have and put it up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my preview as you can see that the text underneath the text field is now always the same as the text in the text field, right? That's because the text field is directly reading and writing uh, to my query state property. Now in a slightly more complex application, you might actually have a class called search view model or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm not going to say that view models are what you should be doing. It's just one of the things that you can be doing. And maybe that view model holds on to a query, which is a string, right? So we're going to move our, um, our query string into that search view model. Uh, and this should, of course, be observable object. Oop. There we go. Right, so now we can actually say, instead of using this query directly, I'm gonna make a state object here because we're making an observable object that we own inside of this content view. It's gonna be var view model. And it's going to be an instance of my search view model. Right, here we go. And now, of course, I cannot find dollar $query anymore because that moved into the view model. So to create my binding, I want to say $viewModel.Query, right? So now instead of reading the, the query property from my content view, I'm going to read and mutate the query property on my view model. And of course, this text will now also become ViewModel.Query. And if we build the app now, we can see that things work out just fine. Now, in somewhat bigger apps, again, uh, you might actually move this text field elsewhere, right? So we're gonna, for the sake of this example, we're gonna make a struct, and we're gonna call this search field. And it's going to be a view. And we're kind of going to, to emulate what's happening inside of this text field, right? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and say at binding var query, is going to be off type string, but somebody else is going to provide this to us, right? Because a binding means that somebody else owns this state. I want to be able to read and manipulate that state, but it's not mine, right? Somebody else owns this. And so for the body of this view, I will actually take my text field that I wrote earlier, and I'm gonna go ahead and move that into here. But, and then I can make an instance of my search field um, and I can pass that, the binding to my view model query. And this search field can now pass a binding to its query onto the text field, right? So we can forward our binding by using $query again. 
Uh, and now the text field has access to the search fields query and the search fields query comes from the view model, right? So we're kind of building this tree of um, state that we don't own, but that we do have access to. And my preview still works, right? So we can still see that this is fine. Now, all of this uses pre iOS 17 constructs. Uh, on iOS 17, we can use something other than observable objects to make observable objects. We can use the observable macro. We can say at observable uh, on our class, and we can get rid of this observable object conformance, and we can get rid of that published property. Right, so now we just have an observable view model that has one property called query. And to make an instance of that inside of our content view, we can no longer use state object. So we'll be using at state, right? Because this is a property that we own, uh, we created, and it's ours, it's our state. So we, we have to mark this as add state so that SwiftUI knows to reuse the current value uh, for the duration of content view being alive. So we're going to say add state var view model equals search view model. It's gonna look pretty much the same as before, but now whenever we change one of the properties on view model uh, inside of our struct, and if that struct needs the property, right? So in this case, if we have query and we access query in our views body, then the observable macro will tell SwiftUI to read raw. It's really kind of neat, um, but I won't go into it too much because it's really a topic for another video. So here we have our add state var view model and our code still works. So that's great, right? So we can make bindings to our search view models query directly because we wrapped it in state. Now, if your app grows a lot and you make more and more reusable components and more and more small views, you might actually want to have a struct uh, search view, right? Um, that's going to encapsulate all the information about search. And it might not own its view model. So it might be passed a let view model of type search view model. And um, it will have a var body, some view. Now I should just put a little hello world in there for now, because I first want to show you how to pass this observable object around. And then I want to show you an issue that we'll run into, right? So I'm going to put hello world here. And to make my search view inside of my content view, I can now simply pass my view model. And if at any point my view model changes, uh, my, my view will simply redraw and update, right? So that's great. Now the problem here is whenever I want to use my search field in here and I have to pass a binding of type string to the search field that your initial reaction might say dollar view model dot query uh, that creates our binding that's how we always do it but sadly um, we cannot find dollar view model in scope and that's because this dollar prefix only exists when we wrap this this view model with a property wrapper because a dollar prefix gives us access to something called a projected value again i'm not going to get into that just like i'm not going to get into observable because that is yet another video i kind of feel like this might spawn off two or three uh, extra videos. So this is a bit of a problem right now because we have this let, we, we can't make this state because this is not a view model that we own, right? Somebody else owns it and state indicates ownership. So we shouldn't mark this as state, it wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, one way to fix this could be to say, well, fine, we'll create an instance of binding ourselves. And you can totally do that. And you can pass a separate getter and setter closure. So on get, we would pass view model query, and on set, we would get a new value, and we would say view model dot query equals new value. And we can run this code, and uh, that would work, right? Our preview was paused, but we can resume it, and there you have it. This works completely fine. So we can actually see this is quite interesting that by reading uh, the query value from our view, view model, and by mutating the query value on our view model, SwiftUI is actually correctly redrawing all of our views. So that's cool, right? We can see that the observable macro works here. However, as you can imagine, writing uh, this binding yourself, it's error prone, it's tedious, it's really not what you want to be doing. So instead of having to do this, uh, the Apple SwiftUI team provided at bindable for us. Right, and so add bindable gives us a property wrapper, and for that reason, also a projected value that allows us to create these bindings again. Right, so instead of making our own binding, we can do $viewmodel.query. 
And what's kind of interesting here is that um, the, the bindable property wrapper on the inside will pretty much do the exact same thing I just did, which is to take the key path or property that I'm using here. And it's making a getter and setter for me. So whenever we get the value for our binding, we get view model query. Whenever we set, we set view model query. It's really kind of neat. And uh, if we resume to preview again, we'll see that that still works just fine. So bindable allows us to create bindings to observable classes, right? Uh, because otherwise we would not be able to do that unless the observable class was already wrapped in state. Um, we do have one more situation that's kind of awkward that I won't really cover too much in this video, but that's if uh, this view model would be inside of the environment. Right, just to kind of code that up a little bit for you, let's say we have at environment and then slash dot search view model. Is of course, this doesn't really exist in here. Uh, search view model bar view model. If that's how you're passing this view model around, you can't make a binding like this. If this is what you have, you have to go at binding var uh, bindable vm, right? Just short name uh, equals uh, view model, right? And this would take the view model from the environment, wrap it in the bindable. Sorry about that. This should be at bindable var bindable vm equals view model, and that wraps my view model in the bindable property wrapper allowing me to create bindings again. It is quite tedious that you have to do this for stuff that you get from the environment, but I haven't found a better way to do this just yet. So there you have it. Um, bindable allows you to create bindings to observable classes that otherwise are not bindable, right? If they're state annotated, I already set this, um, then you can totally make bindings already. If you would otherwise use a let, um, then bindable can help you to create bindings to that property. Don't go marking everything bindable if you pass it around. If you don't need to make a binding to a property on, in this case, the search view model, there's no point in annotating with bindable, right? You can just make it a let only if you need that binding should you mark this as at bindable. And as you can see, this does not replace or conflict with binding at all. Binding still fulfills the same role it did before. It allows you to read state that is owned externally and it allows you to mutate state that is owned externally. If you want to learn more about the property wrappers that SwiftUI provides, I have a website called SwiftUI Property Wrappers that I'll put up on the screen right now. Uh, you can go there to see all of the property wrappers that are available uh, to you in SwiftUI. And uh, you can really use the website to understand all of the property wrappers much better. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.